All right, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you all how to program your macros keys as well as uh, outside functions for other programs with the Corsair Gaming K95 keyboard. All right, so the K95 keyboard got the G1 keys, you know, these extra macros keys. And I noticed a lot of people was having a hard time getting it programmed. In particular, I'm using mine for the purpose of OBS. I wanted to use it for particular commands, starting and stopping recording, uh, you know, and cutscenes. And for some reason, it will never match up. The image you're looking at right now is actually the one that I ended up figuring it out and creating, which I'm going to delete for the purpose of this video. Ugh, it hurt to delete it, but I'm, I'm doing it to make sure that this is accurate for y'all. All right, so. Okay, so at this part of the tutorial, what you're going to want to do is open up your Crosshair Utility app. And it's a couple settings in here that you're going to want to adjust first so that you won't have problems later. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do, if you're using a Void Wireless uh, Crosshair headphone set, you're going to want to go over to your settings. And you're going to want to disable auto shut off. So you're going to want to check that box. All right. And the reason you want to turn off uh, the disable auto shut off is when you create this new profile um, to represent your stream. Uh, program or whatever application it'll mute your microphone when you switch from one profile to another if the microphone isn't set but if you disable this uh, from what I've seen so far it will eliminate that problem so you're gonna want to turn this off first before you proceed with the creating of the first profile and theme for your streaming application so once you get that turned off um, you can go back to your default app um, click the drop down and you're going to want to click the plus. This will be your second profile. That will be for your streaming application. Um, for this tutorial we're going to use um, OBS. That's what I'm using. So we're going to make it Twitch. Since I'm streaming on Twitch. OBS. And this will be the profile for the application of OBS. Later we'll link them, but you want to create the theme before you create the link. Okay, so we're going to just save it with to Twitch OBS name. Um, then the next step, we're going to design a basic theme. Um, and for the theme I'll be using today, since uh, like I said, I am streaming on Twitch, I'm going to use purple and white, um, you know, to represent... So you're going to want to click on that new um, theme. Click your K95 RGB keyboard. Then you want to click lighting effects. And to add your first channel, um, which you can add many channels, whatever the program allows. All right, you can add more than 8 to 10 from what I understand. Um, you're going to want to first select the area that you want to light. You can do that two ways. You can do that by dragging and selecting the area that you would like to light, which I'm going to go for this area in all white. So i just show you how to do that now. Double click your white icon and select the color of white. Pick whether you um, want it to be static, gradient, ripple, solid, or wave. For this particular one, I'm going to use solid, which would just be one solid color. It won't do anything. Um, you're going to want to click the plus to add that lighting effect. All right. And then once you got that lighting effect loaded where you want it, you're going to click save. And there we got our first part of the Twitch theme that I'll be using for OBS. Okay. And that will only apply to this particular profile. When you switch to a separate profile, it changes the entire layout and function of the keyboard. All right. So now going back to our Twitch OBS uh, profile, we're going to add the color purple. All right. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make this one with a ripple, uh, a ripple effect. So you can see a little how the ripple effect work. Um, again, we're going to go with the color purple for the ripple. No, we're going to go with the wave in purple. 
double click select your area we're going to do the full length of the keyboard now you can also um, if I didn't want to select the entire thing and I wanted to highlight some particular areas you can hold control and then kind of uh, pick out the areas that you don't want to be lit or you do want to light all right by just holding control so now those particular keys won't be lit all right so that's how you um, select individual keys in continuation as long as you hold control you will basically keep selecting them but when you let go of control if you click off you lose them all right so that's important to keep in mind again we're gonna select all go with purple insert lighting effect and as you can see you got the wave going across the keyboard now um, lighting time is how long that particular effect will last before it disappears uh, meaning you can set an effect to not make the length of the keyboard depending on how long you allow that time to run so what we're gonna try to do is stop that line at halfway by adjusting uh, the lighting time from 10 seconds to 5 seconds this should stop it from making the length of the keyboard no okay we'll go a little bit lower for demonstration purposes we'll go to 2 and if you notice uh, now the wave can't make it the distance of the keyboard because it's not enough time all right this is also the amount of time that due to the effect lasting to that set time it's as if that bar would continue to move for 15 seconds if you set it for 15 so that's how long it would be before that bar will repeat itself coming from the other side all right so we're gonna set that back to the default time of 10 Okay, and that uh, should put our bar back. But as you notice, it's going that extra distance now. So it take a little longer for the bar to repeat. Now, you also have velocity, which controls the speed of the traveling light effect. Okay, so we're going to increase the speed of the purple bar to make it move faster. Uh, again, for demonstration purposes, we're going to increase the velocity to... Uh, 18 seconds and you'll notice that uh, the bar moves faster now okay the next thing we're gonna do is I wanted to go in both directions so we're gonna add a two side split alright so now this will make that effect go in two directions instead of one also um, another cool thing to make it a little more unique is you can adjust uh, the degrees of the effect which for demonstration purpose again we'll go with 25% angle uh, on that rip on that wave effect and that will make it look like this and again it's just a basic theme that you can start off with um, you can tweak it come up with your own you don't have to use none of the colors I use it's purely just for example if you was having a hard time figuring out how to use the particular effects alright um, and that pretty much uh, be sufficient to have a good idea how to work with this alright now the tail is um, in representation of the trail that follows behind each bar meaning if we increase the trail to seven seconds you get bigger bars because now the bars trail they don't move as quickly so they have a slight drag to them that's a that's better for gradient effects all right normally uh, that's what I found that they work the best with gradient effects 